All right, so I've talked to other actors and actresses known more for their comedic roles about taking on a dramatic role. And they say it's not that hard because comedy is inherently dramatic. And so I'm wondering, do you feel the same way or or was it a challenge? Because Lee Israel is so guarded. Was it a challenge to play her? It was, I mean, I always think any character is a challenge. I think you try to do them justice. Maybe a little more pressure with Lee just because she was real. And there's the added thing of, you know, I hope I'm doing right by her. I hope this is, I hope she wouldn't hate it, which Lee probably would, but <laughs> she would have liked the attention on her work. Um, but no, for me, comedy or drama is always secondary. If, if I like the story and if I like the character, the approach is the exact same. And I think I've played a lot of very challenging, strong women, but they usually, you know, they lead they lead outward. And I, I thought it was really um, a great challenge and also really strangely fun to play Lee, who was so kind of everything went inert. I mean, her, I think unjustly, she was so invisible to so many people. And I think she also used it to her advantage. I think it's why she got away with things because she wasn't noticed, but it's also what, you know, made her an incredibly lonely person. You know, Jack is so in your face about him. Lee is so guarded and closed down. Do you think they wanted to be in each other's lives or did they need to be in each other's lives or both? I think both. I don't know if Lee would admit to either of those things. I mean, Richard always says that Jack's like the Labrador retriever that just keeps like, no matter no matter how many times you push him away, he comes back and he's just as happy every time. And I'm like, well, I guess Lee's the armadillo that just is completely in her own shell, but I think there's, I mean, there's such an unlikely pair, and yet they're both so lonely, and they're so isolated in their own way, and I think they finally just met at the right time where, you know, at some point you do, every human needs someone to look at them and actually see them, see them for who they really are, and to be okay with it, to know that, for Lee to know Jack is this grifter who's you know, probably doing every wrong thing you can do and to be like, I know what you do. I'm, I'm fine with it. And for, for Jack to really see Lee with for all of her flaws and eccentricities and to be like, I'm okay with it. I mean, that's, that's a hard thing to do. So people that can't let people really in, these two were able to do it. I think it was kind of magic, magic timing and I think they did need it. You know, Jack is so kind of in your face. He's got this in your face personality, but Lee is more reserved yeah. and guarded. Do you think these two people wanted to be in each other's lives or did they need to be in each other's lives or both? No, I think they, they it's a great description of them. I think that they they had no there was no need there was no intention for them to be together because they're polar opposites. Mm -hmm. I mean, she's curmudgeonly like a porcupine. She's sitting in the Julius bar with her Walkman headphones on. She has no interest in anybody else. And he's just, you know, Labrador-like comes out. He's got no money. He wants a drink. He's like, you know, haven't I seen you somewhere before? Oh, yeah, you're that person from Fandango. Hi, do you have any money? Can we have a drink? Let's go out. So he will do that in order to scourge and grift off, off people. And then it turns out that they have, I suppose, loneliness in common and a need for... She... He brings out something in her that I think she hasn't really allowed herself to, to give into. And he's charming and you know chivalrous to a degree. And uh, she kind of falls for that. And it's completely platonic because she's lesbian, he's gay. But um, they somehow end up enjoying each other's company. To her surprise, she says, yeah, this was, he said, am I gonna see you again? After they met her for the first time. And she says, yeah, I think this was, yeah, this wasn't too bad. <laughs> you know, it's sort of reluctantly saying, yeah, well, maybe I could see you again tomorrow. What's something you learned about the real Jack that best informed your performance of him? Uh, there was very little information in Lee Israel's book, um, because she was so eccentric, writing about herself <laughs> and her great literary forgery schemes. He, once she had been rumbled by the FBI that, and they were on to her, that she was the person forging these letters. In order to carry on making money, she got Jack Hawk to go and fence them um, in her absence. And she would somehow very often say to him, well, I think you're gonna get 600 bucks or maybe 800 bucks for this. And if he'd come back with 2,000, that was the clue for me that I thought, well, this is somebody who is 
really good at the subterfuge of going, hi, you're from Fandango. I, I've got this scheme, I've got these great letters. And you know, it's, he just manages to charm and pull the wool over people's eyes long enough that he gets the money out of them. And I thought that, that's a talent to do that. Yeah. So um, that's as the sliver of stuff that I went on.